here for a Beating Binge Eating Blueprint graduate interview with Kendall. Hi, Kendall. Thank you for being here. Of course. Awesome. So I'm Brittany Brown, founder of BeatingBingeEating.com, leader of the Food Freedom Forever movement. And today we're talking with Kendall. So Kendall graduated our Beating Binge Eating Blueprints. It is an eight-week program that completely shifts your relationship with your body and food. And I'm going to ask Kendall just some questions so you can learn from her journey. Um, so she's going to tell you, you know, the big thing that shifted her relationship with food, her body. You'll get some actionable takeaways and then also just hear about her journey in general. She struggled for over 10 years since she was about 12 years old and now is to a place finally where she's feeling in her power with food and more balanced and just more free and less critical in her life. So she has a lot to share and I know you'll have a lot to learn. So Kendall, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Awesome. So yeah, first question I'd love to just ask, you know, where were you pre- just so we can paint the picture of like what life was like pre beating binge eating blueprint. We're just going to abbreviate it as BBEB, um, you know, so pre that, like what did, what did life look like for you? Life, food, body, all of it. Um, <laughs> pretty terrible compar comparatively. Um, I was like just in a very, very negative place. And like, I don't even think I really realized how negative of a place I was. Like every thought about myself, like whether it was body or like food, um, like for going for jobs because you know I'm graduating college soon and um, so I was an athlete like everything was negative and I was also thinking about food 24 7 like it was never on my mind I was really it was I was like mentally exhausted just honestly just exhausted that I didn't have a lot of mental space for other things um, you know, thinking about, like, what I should eat, what I did just eat, like, how much I should eat, like, oh, no, I know I'm going to get home and I'm going to eat, uh, like, I can't do that, I can't do that the second I get home, and, you know, binge happens, and it was, um, it would just felt, like, very, like, hectic and stressful and exhausting, mentally exhausting, like, all the time, it's definitely where I was at, <laughs> yeah. Gotcha, yeah, it's, the struggle can be just so taxing, for sure, um, you know, and I'd love to know, and I know you were in it a while and tried a lot of different things to heal and just a lot of, a lot of food, focus on the food and can try to kind of get the results you wanted. So I know there's this long history and then you, um, you come into our program and you got a really incredible transformation. I know the journey's still going. It's always still going, right? But you shifted things so quickly mm -hmm. and you showed up and you, I would say completely transform your relationship with your body and food, but also yourself, um, you know, how you treat yourself, how you talk to yourself, those things that were leaning you towards restriction control, you know, binging, all of it, you've greatly shifted a lot of that like mental noise that so many of us experience when we're in the cycle. So would love to just hear a little snapshot of, you know, from, we just heard where you were. So where you are now and you're, you've graduated about a month ago, I'd say, right. Or my, yeah. is my timeline off? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So came to us about four months ago, graduated about a month ago. So yeah, I would love to hear where you're, where you're at now. Yeah. So definitely with my like self-confidence and my thoughts about myself are like 180 switch. I see like, you know, sometimes there's days where I'm like, um, I feel like a little bit bloated or something, but I have that like neural pathway that's saying like, no, you're beautiful. No, you're awesome. Like, no, you work really hard. Like, no, you're a very compassionate person. And, um, so that has been amazing. And like, like usually when I talk about it, I cry of joy, but I'm not going <laughs> to cry, um, right now because it just feels like so good to have, um, that positivity in my life. And I feel like I can kind of get through anything. Um, and nothing really like ruins my whole day anymore. And, um, eating doesn't ruin my whole day anymore. So like if I had a binge or if I was feeling crappy about food or I don't know, it was just on my mind, it, what, however I was feeling about my body, like shifted my entire day. And that doesn't happen anymore. Like, I feel like I have the tools to get through it and like move past, um, anything. And so, yeah, I have a lot more love for my body and for myself and the, like freedom from food definitely is like, I'm feel like I'm right there. Like I'm still have some situations that I'm figuring out, but I feel like I have all the tools I need. Like I 
I have all the tools I need to get back from like, if I have a maybe almost binge or like if I kind of feel um, like distracted or overwhelmed in situations um, around eating, I feel like I have the tools and like the mindset to be able to think about it and work through it. And um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I think that's where I'm at right now. So I, I definitely feel like a lot more freedom from food than I ever have in my life. That's amazing. Yeah, I love that. And I love, I think just the freedom in your own personal life is just such an incredible testament to how you showed up and how you dug deep and really shifted through a lot and created those pathways to where, you know, loving talk towards yourself is more automatic than some of the old negative self-talk. I think that's yeah. really powerful. Yeah. Um, and then I you can pull that, from that in the situation with food too, you know? Yeah. I think what was really helped in the beginning was like, I kind of went into the program with no inhibitions like I went full in and I fully trusted it and I was like I'm gonna listen to everything I'm gonna take this all in and that I mean it honestly started shifting within like three weeks like drastically so it was I'm so happy that I went in all in and I didn't doubt the process at all which I mean it might be hard for like other people I don't know how I just went in with like total blind faith but I did and it worked yeah, I think that's such a big piece. We always ask the graduates like, hey, what was the one thing that allowed you to just, you know, get such an incredible transformation so quickly and um, an embodied transformation, you know, meaning like it's how you operate now, not just like, oh, I should think positive, like you're naturally more loving towards yourself. Yeah. And that's the answer. It's that all in and it's it's, um, you know, and it doesn't mean that you don't get scared, right? It doesn't mean that's not really scary or you don't have resistance, but I remember you would show up, you would get the support you needed and just keep going, which I think is so, so, so incredible. And then I know with the food piece, I know you've come drastically far and I always say it's like learning a language, you know? So sometimes you just need to get out into the world and practice a little more and those real world situations come up, but you have that tool set. Um, and it's not only a tool set, like it's actually getting easier because you know, you're doing these shifts over time. So I just love that. Um, you know, I'm curious, since we're talking about food, what was your, your big takeaway? Like if anyone was like, hey, I'd love to hear your top tip or not even top tip, your top perspective shift, whatever feels right for you to share that really supported you with the whole freedom with your food and, and breaking free from the binge eating. So I think my main tool that I like still use um, is like being very wary of setting my mind into survival mode. Like that has been my big thing is, um, first of all, you know, nourishing myself. So my brain is not in survival mode and thinking that I need to get food and like never telling myself that, no, you can't have that. Cause that obviously just sets your brain into like, Oh my God, now I need it. You just told me I can't have food. Um, so that has probably been like my most, my most helpful thing, um, in, not setting myself up for failure um is I want to be always like again like nourishing and calming and like loving to my brain and saying like no you can have whatever you want like I don't want to restrict you I love you I want to give you everything you need so definitely being very wary to never set my brain into survival mode has been my biggest tool yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's so important. And it's, it forms the foundation for everything. And so I so often see women going into coaching programs, therapy, by the way, not knocking therapy. I think it's essential for some people, especially if there's things from their past traumas, all of it. Um, you know, I think it's beautiful. And if someone's brain is in survival mode and these patterns are wiring, it doesn't matter how much you shift internally. Like if you're fighting against your physiology at the end of the day, you know, when shit hits the fan, for lack of better terms, you're going to go to the food. And so, um, or just when normal day happens and, you know, your brain recognizes that at 8 PM, when you get home, you binge. And so I think that that's such a big foundational piece of the puzzle. So I love that you shared that. And I'm curious, um, what do you say to the people that are listening that are like, uh, okay, that sounds good in theory, but like, if I let, if I tell myself nothing's off limits, like I'm going to eat 20 bags of Cheetos or like whatever that is. Cause I'm sure you had that fear in the beginning. Can you yeah. explain that little magic that happens? Cause it's, when I say it, I think people are like, of course she says that. But when someone like yeah. you says it, there is this magic that happens where you, the pull stops. So I'd love to hear your take on that and how it happened for you. Yeah. So when I tell myself like, 
you know what, I can have anything I want here. I like if I'm at a I was at a Super Bowl party and there was like all these desserts and chips and dips and all these things. And I was like, I can have anything I want whenever I want it. And I don't know, somehow it just like fully calms down your brain and you're like, okay, it allows you to think about like what you actually want. If you're like, I can have whatever I want, then I'm like, okay, I'm going to choose what I actually want. Like, I'm not going to say like, I can't have that later. So I'm, I need to have it now. It's just like, I can do whatever I want when I want. So like, I get to choose exactly what I want in this moment and it allows me to like, listen to my higher self and to my inner self and say like, what do I actually want? Yeah. Oops, I was on mute. <laughs> um, I love that. I think that that's so powerful. And that is the magic that starts to happen. And, and we call it, you know, for anyone listening, present moment choices. And it sounds so yeah. simple, but just having the ability to decide what you want moment to moment based on checking in with self versus checking into like the 872 nutrition packs that are swirling around in our brain or the list of do's and don'ts or all of that. And that magic starts to happen where that pull yeah. towards those forbidden foods stop. And I love what you said, like, a line that we use all the time in the programs, um, you know, knowing I can have this at any time, do I really want it? And sometimes once you realize that you can have it tomorrow, you just like genuinely don't want it in that moment. And I know you've experienced a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So in the department of body, um, cause I know, I know in your life and kind of self-talk and criticism has gone down so much and that's that's a big thing to shift in such a short span of time so I'm curious any any takeaway any shift any like perspective that supported you in kind of this incredible transformation with how you feel about your body yourself that internal self-talk yeah um I mean what honestly worked was the self-affirmation like meditations um and you know standing in the mirror and like repeating these self-affirmations over and over because I mean in the first like week or two and especially when it was, you know how you, on the meditation, it goes through like one round of it. And then you say all the affirmations again, like every time on the first round for the first couple of weeks, like I did not believe it at all. I was like, yeah. okay, I'm just saying this, like I'm crying because it's sad that I don't believe any of that by myself. Like I remember thinking that, but I just didn't believe it. Um, and it was uh, doing that was like doing the meditations and just like repeating it to myself over and over again for like three to four weeks so that it really started shifting and it like honestly just became a habit for me to think that way so it was really interesting because like you know everyone these days is like oh like love yourself whatever and but it's really hard when you don't realize that it's like actually a kind of a physical neural pathway that you need to practice and like make it a habit because so that made it so much easier to think about it that way it's like no okay if I keep doing it like it's gonna become a neural pathway in my brain and it's going to be easy then. Um, yeah. yeah. So it was that. And then I remember like one time in the car, I started to think negative thoughts and I always honestly just started like arguing with myself. I was like, no, like I am beautiful. Like, no, I am awesome. No, I like did this work today. I'm, I'm a really hard worker. And it was, so it was that. And then like, I don't know. I just remember that moment being so pivotal for me that I like literally just argued my way out of it and then felt so much better afterwards. And I was like, no, I honestly believe that about myself. Like I truly do. So it was, yeah. That's so amazing. I love that. So I'm hearing a lot of things. I'm hearing just to recap, the idea, like love your body, this like one-off thing that you just have to convince yourself, this idea that if I practice love, whether it's through affirmations, nourishment, partnership, whatever that might be, and I practice this over and over, it's going to actually become a part of how I think. Yeah. And I think that's a big differentiating factor between people that are just like, I love my body, you know, I need to be body positive. Um, yes, it's beautiful. And like, it's okay if you don't, you know, it's okay if you feel the friction. It's okay if you need to start with acceptance and just go through the motions for a little and practice that partnership with oneself. So I love that. And I love how it became second nature for you. Yeah. Um, I think that's a really big thing to kind of link onto when you're on this journey, you know, just because you learn it doesn't mean it's going to feel like a yes inside. It might be like, Oh, like, what is this? You know, this doesn't feel right. And then over time there is a method that's working and you know, you don't even realize it's working until three weeks later, you catch yourself in the mirror and you like, don't look at, you know, your back of your legs or whatever it might be. Um, so yeah, I love that. I think that's so, so, so powerful. So 
this is beautiful. I know your big, one of your biggest um, kind of mindsets that allowed you to get the success was really that like all in mentality. So I just fully acknowledge you and um, really just, yeah, just really honor you for that. Cause I know it, it's a specific kind of way to come into things. And in my opinion, it is the method for success, whether you're with us or anywhere. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, you know, I know you had you had been through a lot of healers um, or a lot of methods, not necessarily healers, but methods of trying to break free from this stuff for a while. Yeah. And I know that you've probably been in the position of like looking for answers online, you know, or like looking for like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I stop eating? What's going on? Yeah. So what do you say to someone like that? Who's like, knows there's something going on. They don't know what they are. They landed on this video cause they're, they're like, something's here, but I can't figure out what it is. Or I kind of know it's been cheating, but like, you know, and what's my next step? You know, they're probably leaning towards dieting again. They might be leaning towards therapy. You know, um, I'm curious, you know, what do you say to those people that are kind of out there looking for answers, maybe coming across our work for the time, first time, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so honestly, this program is like different from everything else, everything else I've done. I done like therapy. I took like anxiety medication. I, um, did online forums, like all that type of stuff. And so, and yeah, all the diets, obviously, which did not work. And all of us have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, so I think that the thing that sets your program apart is like the really, it's just like an amazing layout and mix of like the science behind it, which really makes you understand and be able to like work, work with your body because your body, like, you know, it's your brain is like, you know, there's electrical neurons and everything firing. So you can kind of, and the chemicals that run through your body. So like, if you learn about that stuff first and learn how to work with it rather than like force it into submission, which is something we practice, like not doing at all is forcing your body into submission. Um, that like first understanding, um, definitely helps develop like the later self-love. It's like learning how to work with your body, work with your brain, in beneficial ways. And so I like love that it's a mix of science and um, facts about your brain and how it works with the um, like self, you know, the therapy w about the eating and everything. So I think that's what definitely sets this program apart. And this is why it worked like compared to everything else I've tried for the past four or five years to fix this. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. And that's one thing. That's why we, you know, people see our messaging online and they're like, oh, she just does the brain. That's all they focus on. And it's not all we focus on. However, if we don't focus on that in the beginning, yeah. you are going, like, no matter how much deep work we do internally, if you are physio physiologically wired to overeat, binge, think about food, be in survival mode, like, I don't care how much self-love we practice, like, that stuff's still going to come up. So I love what you said. It's like, you understand the science of the behavior change. So you have almost this like foundation to go practice those deeper things with, yeah. um, you know, and I think that's, and thank you for noticing that because, <clears throat> you know, from my, excuse me, from my angle, <laughs> um, I've done it both ways. You know, I have worked with my clients back in my more beginning years of coaching and, you know, I did what I was taught, which is like everything besides the food. And then they'd still be binging, you know, and they might feel better about their bodies and their lives, but they're still binging. So, um, yeah, that, I think that's why our program works so fast as well is you have that kind of like foundation and then, you know, no matter what, you can fall back on that. And then you do the deeper work that's going to actually solidify the transformation and, and make it really last. So thank you for noticing that. It definitely is, um, there's a, a method to our madness for sure. Yeah. So awesome. Well, I mean, Kendall, this was incredible. Anything before we sign off for the day, anything to just kind of say before we go? Um, that this program, I feel like in a way saved my life. So like, I want to oh. tell everyone about it. Um, I don't want to cry, but I might. <laughs> um, it's okay. I might too. <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly, I feel like it like completely turned my life around and saved me in a lot of ways. Mm. Well, I am sending you so much love. I see you. I know that the program definitely, and thank you. And I know the program facilitated the space, but I mean, I've said it so many times, like you fully showed up, right? You know, the program can't work itself. <laughs> yes. um, and so I love that. And I love that you 
just like so excited to see what you have ahead of you. You're young, you have your whole life ahead and this stuff's not going to hold you back. And that's, I just got goosebumps. Like that's really, really exciting to me and it lights up. Thank you for getting vulnerable and sharing just your story with us. And I think everyone's going to learn so much from this. I know it's going to inspire a ton of people. So thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs>